angels. We want to start today's video off with a bit of a preposition. So let's say that you know someone who has committed a crime and years later they reform their life and they then also become aware of someone who is committing a crime. Would you say that it's necessary for them to report said crime or because they have also in the past been convicted of a crime that they should sit idly by and keep their hands clean? We'll follow back to this question at the end of today's video. Good morning, angels. Good morning, Charlie. Hell. We in a hurry. Okay. okay. Before we get started, we'd just like to take a brief moment to say that the opinions stated in this video are just that, opinions. They are not facts, which means that they can't be proven right or wrong. And we don't want you guys to go to anybody else's page spreading hate, because honestly, it's just not worth it. Now, we don't apologize for how we feel, because that would be like apologizing for keeping it real. Love you, angels. Enjoy the show. You know, our Instagrams are almost like our videos, except for they don't talk. Some would consider that an upgrade. Either way, they're not going to follow themselves, so pop on over and give us some love. Now, before we jump in today's video, we do have a second channel. I don't know if you're aware or not. It's called Makeup and Murder. Videos go up bi-weekly. There's a new one up right now. So go ahead and check it out after this video, because life's a blush. And, and then, then you, you die. die. Good morning, angels. I'm Nikki. And I'm Mocha. And this little dumpster fire that you're about to watch is a little something that we like to call Tea Time. A channel where we like to discuss YouTube drama in all its essence. In all of its dirty little essence. Now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you don't, oh well. Angels, today's video goes over topics and includes some images that are not for the faint of heart. So we completely understand if you want to skip this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so every once and again, history starts to repeat itself. And as much as it sucks to reopen old wounds, um, they say that a legacy is left in sharing the lessons that you've learned along the way. So, um, if we can share our lessons with everyone and all have a very learnable moment, then it'll probably make this entire thing worth it, as long as we're learning and growing together. So when would you say that you can recall this entire thing kind of starting? Uh, probably like October, November of last year. It yeah, it and was actually, yeah, I remember- back and forth on the Twitter. Yeah, so, Around October, November of last year, um, people were getting really, really tired of the older drama channels. They had decided that they had all sold out to the man, um, and <laughs> <laughs> we saw a need to cover content in that area, so we decided to fill that need. And um, we filled it pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> Really. I mean, we went, we went hard, we went pretty hard. We did, we? yeah. And you know, the message, it turns out, was landing. Yeah, but it didn't stick. And it didn't stick because as it turns out, the Heathers, which is what we had nicknamed the older drama channels. As uh, a collective. As a collective, right? Because they tend to move as like a unit, right? So one does monster. something most of them they all do it right um they were not for one single solitary second about to let us get the drop on them oh honey like we found that out the hard way so the nick snyder video drops can you remember what was going through your head at the time I didn't watch it. Yeah. And I was like, well, honey, I'm not going to watch that because I already know it's going to piss me off. Yeah. Especially seeing him, like, gloating about it. Like, I oh. knew I wasn't going to watch it. He was happier than a pig in shit. I mean, I was, like, pissed. I was like, why the hell you, why the hell you say all those damn things back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. So, you guys, in, <laughs> it seems like an attempt to really just get from under our thumb Nick Snyder in concert with a, another small content creator. It's important for us to point out here that that content creator happened to be black and that will 
that concept will reemerge later in today's video. Um, but Nick Snyder, in concert with that other creator, had left no stone unturned in their search for leverage to silence us. Mm -hmm. um, we thought that all that research had been done by the smaller creator, but in some recent events, we found out that Nick Snyder and Dustin Daly also played a large role in helping to find that information. Once that information was found, Nick Snyder spared no time in publishing a video. Oh, honey. Um, I can remember at the time several smaller content creators making sure that I was aware that this video was happening. Um, I can remember pressing play on the video, not even knowing like not even thinking about what this could possibly be about yeah but i didn't know that it was gonna be as bad as it was i was mortified and not just really even for me but i was mortified because like 10 years ago it turns out like i was saying the most disgusting and vile things that you could say about about everyone yeah you sure did yeah, about yeah, everyone everyone it was just like what a sad i just look at it and i'm just like how pathetic of a person must you have been to been saying all of these shit things just about any and everyone that you could if you breathed i talk shit you know yeah. what i'm saying and i think the i was most disappointed in myself because it was just like we were speaking against these things. This is what we were speaking against, right? Like a lot of people at the time were super upset that it seems like the, the larger drama channels were sort of, I don't know, saving the day for content creators who were being disgusting and vile and being mi microaggressive and outright racist at times and we were we had built a platform out of speaking very directly against these things and here i was 10 years ago definitely being part of the problem yeah um so i, I don't think embarrassed is a way to say it because it was less about embarrassment for me you guys know i as a person have no shame um i was disappointed that i knew that People were going to watch that and they were going to be let down and their feelings were going to be hurt. Oh, I yeah. was hurt that I knew that I was hurting other people. And I think that was like the shittiest part. And I knew that it wasn't even about me, but people deserve to hear not even an explanation, right? Not an explanation, not an excuse, but just a, I fucked up. And I am hella fucking sorry. And there's like a part of me that at the time, there's like, you know, your little insecure self, like you just want to play it off as like a joke, right? Like that was like peak 2012 edgelord humor. But you know what also was passed off as, you know, humor or entertainment at one point? What's the matter with you boys shooting up that man's hen house? I'll shoot any chicken trying to follow me home. Those aren't funny to anyone. No. At least not to a well-adjusted member of society. So I knew that I just had to apologize because... It was the right thing to do. So full transparency, I would throw the tweets up there for you to see. Um, but I don't have access to them anymore. Um, and the only person that I know who does have access to them, we're not exactly sitting around a campfire and um, holding each other's hands. So that's why they're not going up. Um, time went by, uh, you know, people started to come around once again. Um, I, there was a lot of work to get over and sort of heal um, in our small space in the community from, from that event. 
Um, and we're still working, I would say, to this day to do that. Yeah. But it seems like the Heathers have found a rather productive tactic because it wasn't too much time that went by that um, another creator by the name of Timimi, you remember Timimi? Oh, I love Timimi. <laughs> she came out with a video that was highly critical of um, not only Dustin Daly, but I believe a few other creators as well. And not too much time passed by before a few of her mm -hmm. older tweets had also resurfaced. Mm -hmm. um, in all fairness, I don't believe that I have access to her, those tweets, but because I'm not putting mine up because I can't find them, it would be unfair to put hers up yeah. too. But, so I didn't even look for them. Um, but the N-word was said a couple of times, um, just not really the best things to say, right? Um, and I can just remember going through that and, and sort of looking and saying, this seems like a bit of a, a bit of a pattern. Weaponize minority anger, humiliate and discredit. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely nothing that we could do for Tamimi at the time because she was a white woman and no matter what, it wasn't gonna be well received, whatever she did. <clears throat> yeah. So we, I can remember reaching out to her and saying, you know, this feels like a bit of a pattern. Um, of course, you're going to have to, you know, come to terms with, with your actions, but just know um, that we understand that people can change over time Definitely. and we don't see it as a reflection of who you are today. Mm -hmm. And also treat any stranger wandering into your DMs like a hostile witness, because that is definitely our experience mm -hmm. with this thing. So after reaching out to Tamimi, we made a small video of our own where we talked to the pattern, um, but we were met with the feedback that it seemed like we were more upset about having initially have been exposed than we were um, for our own actions. So being that we were maligned and sidelined, we sort of just sat that one out. There was nothing really that we could do at that point except for make an observation and put it in our back pocket. Yeah. So this brings us to about current. Mm -hmm. um, last week. Last week, you guys may have noticed a small internet tiff between uh, Smokey Glow and Angelica Oles. Mm -hmm. um, they have both since decided that they do not want to carry out the drama anymore and they have placed that to the side. It is completely understandable and we'd like to support that. Um, so we no longer want to discuss the story from that angle. But there was a story developing sort of in the backdrop of that kick up, I'll say. <laughs> um, so while the two were at odds, um, it appears that there was another smaller creator by the name of Diana Plantano. And um, she had a couple of months prior uh, actually gone to Angelica Oles with some concerns um, about some of the content that she had put out. And if you saw our last video, we briefly talked to that. But basically, um, we get the impression that Angelica Oles had made some statements that made the general public feel as if uh, she was really downplaying the emotions of Black women. Mm -hmm. um, in mainly saying that uh, the Kardashians lived rent-free in people's minds, yeah. which at the time people interpreted as her saying that the Kardashians lived rent-free in black people's mind, more specifically black women. Yeah. So uh, Diana Plantana had made several videos or at least one video that we know of mm -hmm. covering the topic. Um, she had also um, actually addressed Angelica or tried to address her in her videos and on her social media. Um, and it turns out that she got blocked. Now, if you had seen um, Angelica Oles' I, I guess it's an apology. apology video. Yeah. So it's kind of an apology video, kind of a call out video. We'll let 
you decide. You, yeah, no, right? no, you <laughs> You'll have to decide which one that is. Um, but Angelica explained that she hadn't really um, ignored the concerns of Black women. She actually had prioritized the concerns of Black women and tried to respond to their concerns over anyone else's. Yeah. Um, there was a part of the video where she had pointed out that the only people that she had actually blocked uh, were white or white passing. Or people with no, like, profile picture. Or, you know, the nameless, faceless Abbeys that are floating around on Twitter. We're all familiar with them. <laughs> um, and then she put the images of the folks that she had blocked on the screen. Um, and Diana Plantano's image had popped up on the screen. She was like, oh no, honey. Right. Diana immediately took to her social to express her discomfort and being called white passing. Mm -hmm. um, and it must have made Angelica very uncomfortable. Um, and we say that because her next move was one that I really didn't see coming. It was a, the wrong move, but... It was definitely a move. Um, it seems like the pattern that we had seen emerging over the past year that had been highly successful um, was being used once again. Mm -hmm. um, Angelica Oles, I can't even say Angelica, someone, right? Um, evidence would support me knowing who they are who they are who gave angelica this idea um had gone and found old tweets of um diana's mm -hmm. where she uh said something disparaging to mexican people and she also used the n-word yeah and she retweeted it and with the caption this you Angelica did that. Angelica oh, did that. I'm pretty sure you guys know this by now. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you looked at that, when you saw that, what were your immediate thoughts? You know, she's disgusting. I was like, why would you do that? Like, you just put out that apology video. Well, I guess we can call it apology video. Yeah. And you're going to do that? Like, I thought it was disgusting. I thought it was, like, a bad taste. Yeah. It's like, girl. The first thing I thought was... Here we go again. Weaponizing minority anger, mm -hmm. which is something that we broached or we talked about at the beginning of this video, but I feel more comfortable getting into it at this point in the video. You know, there's been a lot of talk. A lot of channels have covered this. We knew uh, when we put out a poll last week, we put out a poll on Twitter and we were basically like, after seeing that Angelica and Smokey Glow had basically set aside their differences and they didn't want anything to do with it. We thought, you know, out of respect for, out of admiration for Hannah, Smokey Glow, oh, and a professional courtesy for Angelica, even though we don't know her, we feel like- yeah, I don't think we don't want to. Right, it just, it felt like the right thing to do to sort of let that situation die. Um, but I think we kind of decided right then and there that it would be a huge disservice to our communities if we didn't sort of talk about this because this is not the first or the second, but now the third time that we've seen this pattern emerge. And to use the outrage and the anger of marginalized people, um, Black, Hispanic, whatever other that there is, to sort of settle the score against someone can't be something that we continue to see happen in this community. Um, and so there were a lot of, you know, a lot of commentary channels ended up covering it. And we thought, you know, since, I don't know, the pattern seemed to have started with us, or maybe we think it started with us because we lived through it. Yeah. If you guys know any other evidence of this happening in the past, drop it in the comments below. Let we us would know. Be, Put a link down if yeah, you can. We would love to educate ourselves on it, but we figured since it seemingly started with us and was successful and has been used since then, that it's definitely something that we wanted to cover. I think a lot of people, especially, and I'm going to say it, white people in general, want to know why, what's the difference between um, people of color sort of having these sort of instances and white people having these instances? And what would you say? I mean, I don't see 
a difference between a white person saying that and a person of color saying it. But I definitely think it's like distasteful, like finding something someone said like five or ten years ago and then using it to like validate yourself, like today. Today. Yeah. I think it's disgusting. Yeah, so I think where the problem is, um, and especially in today's time, I think what people are failing to realize is when you have marginalized groups that have always sort of been um, discounted, to play those groups of individuals against one another to validate your claim, especially mm -hmm. if you're a member of the in-group that doesn't face oppression or not as much oppression, I think that's where people are, that's where folks might be not getting that it's not exactly the same, yeah. right? And so a lot of people have been saying, you know, um, why has Diana been so easily forgiven? And I think it's a mixture of those two things, right? So I think it becomes a matter of, you know, Angelica Oles did this last week or three months ago, mm -hmm. right? And also Angelica Oles is a white woman, whereas Diana is, you know, of ethnic heritage. And the things that she said were about someone else of ethnic heritage, which means that you know, there's definitely some things that must be worked out there. Yeah, it's but definitely not right. It's definitely absolutely not right. And there's some things that need to be worked out, but that needs to be worked out between that group. There's a certain sort of sickness in seeing, you know, someone who is part of the in-group really weaponize the anger of people who are part of the out-group in that way. Um, and I think... I think that Diana said it best in her apology video, black people in particular, black women are amazingly forgiving in situations like this. So it does not surprise me that forgiveness was easily granted. Yeah. So in the days since uh, Diana Plantana has put out two videos addressing both situations. Um, we have personally spoken with Diana and told her, you know, even though it wasn't okay, we don't think that what you did five years ago um, reflects who you are as a person today. Yeah, especially if you like, you watch her content. Yeah, like, but- It definitely doesn't reflect who she is. We're not a monolith. We do not speak for everyone. Mm -hmm. All that we can say is that we speak for ourselves. Um, like I can definitely understand why people are like, well, I'm sorry, honey, I can't forgive you. Like I definitely, I can understand that. Yeah, there are certain people who are definitely like, enough is enough mm -hmm. is enough. And to that, we have to say, that is your choice, that is your right. Yeah. We cannot, you know, forgiveness cannot be given for an entire community from two people who happen to be a part of that community. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the most, I won't say interesting part, but... I definitely saw some things that let me know that if this doesn't get addressed, it will continue to happen. Um, and so it was very formulaic. And so formulaic that the smaller creator who um, was actually a part of discovering my the tweets, finding of the tweets, the finding of my original tweets actually did reach out um, and sort of express that, you know, I kind of understand some of your frustrations now because this seems like the exact formula. Um, and through it all, I have to say that I don't know what anybody's motivations are behind it, but I am not holding anyone accountable in this entire situation but myself. Um, I mean, you can't get blood from a beat. So if there's nothing there, then there's nothing to see. Um, but the fact that there was something there, um, just means that I have to be accountable for my actions. Mm -hmm. But in the release of that video, um, or in the release of that information, you have the exact same formula. So you keep hearing me say formula a lot. Let's talk a, a little bit more in depth about what that formula is. The behind the scenes research, which we can't really speak to much, um, but from our experience, a small team of people get together and they sleuth um, through all of your information to find derogatory statements that you have made. Um, the, and it's usually the weaponizing of uh, minority anger yeah. in any way possible. Um, mm -hmm. Then a video is created. Now you guys might remember through this entire video, I said that it's important uh, to point out 
um, that the creator that was involved or the smaller creator that was involved in finding my tweets happened to be black or visibly black because there's a lot about race and, race and ethnicity that play into this and I am just in no, that is so <laughs> far out of my league. I couldn't even explain how it goes. And I think, I think the people involved can't really explain how it goes either because I know that that creator and myself, um, I don't know, ethnically, racially, we're different, right? Uh -huh. It just, we just happen to be, I guess, black, but that's where the similarities end. Yeah. But they made sure that they found someone to sort of pin it on so it couldn't look like that they, they were continuing to be racist. Does that make sense? No, it makes sense. They're just sense. like, oh, we need someone black to do this. They uh -huh. found someone black, right? But that's where the similarities ended. Well, on the same token, um, there was a creator who did a video, published a video about the Diana Plantana situation. And she happened to be of, I'm going to say... Latin heritage or Latin X. I think that's an umbrella term that covers a lot. Uh, let me know in the yeah, comment section if I'm saying it wrong. Educate us, y'all. Educate us because I could totally be saying it wrong. Um, but they found someone that sort of to be racially similar mm -hmm. to come out to and put at the forefront of that. So they found someone to make that video. Then other channels signal boosted, right? So you had Nick Snyder retweeting that video, other channels retweeting that information, uh -huh. other Heather friendly channels recreating similar content to make sure that the message was signal boosted yeah, as much as humanly sure possible is, it's there. Um, to make sure that it is out there. The end game, weaponize, humiliate, discredit. And so I think in those findings, it is not only extraordinarily inappropriate yeah. for right on the hills of an, ap I la every time I have to say apology video, I'm like, is there a different word that I can use? Because apology video doesn't cut it. Cause she, the last half of the video was, was a call out video. Out Smoky Glow, right. some of the stuff that she's done back in the day. So it wasn't really an apology. No. And calling out someone for something as little as hearting a comment on a video. Do you know that we almost heart every comment that we get unless someone's being like downright yeah. nasty? Like sometimes we'll heart it and then we'll like read it and be like, oh no, <laughs> I can't heart that, right? Yeah. But it's just like, it was a clear attempt at discrediting someone else. Or trying to like shift blame mm -hmm. it was like her, yeah i did this but, but look what she did over there right that's and, like that's what she tried to do with the diana situation exactly well. yeah i'm awful but look at that person mm -hmm. they're also awful which only means that we're all awful yeah and it doesn't make it any better or worse for me it still means that the entire situation is absolutely terrible yeah so i think the next question for me is where does it go from here and I think that we all need to have this conversation about where it goes. Because for me, I'm at a point where um, if you get called out for something, bringing up something from 10 years ago, five years ago, is definitely not gonna make what you did right now any better. Yeah. In fact, I think that if you get called out for something, you should just address it and say, you know what, I made a mistake. And if someone else made a mistake, I think it'd be very trivial to point out that mistake because it doesn't absolve you of anything that you've done. Yeah. In fact, in reading comments in our own section, right, and looking through it, I, I think we did a good job of trying to say, yes, Diana said what she said, but that is a completely separate event that shouldn't take away from this event. Exactly. Right? And so I think getting called out is absolutely fine. Yeah. Because you have to be accountable, right? Because you absolutely have got to be accountable. But me slinging d like mud on you doesn't make what I did to begin with any better yeah. than it originally was. And I think if we're just all accountable in the moment and say, you know what? That was a mistake. I apologize. We all make them. <laughs> this is what I've learned from the mistake that I made. I understand if that was too big of a mistake for you to gr continue growing uh -huh. with me. I would appreciate it if you did. I think we would actually be a lot better off. But you know what that creates a problem of? 
Everyone getting along. <laughs> well, yeah, that creates the problem of everyone getting along. That means that you would have to create more nuanced content. You would have to see things from every angle. You would have to say, it would force drama channels to actually say, well, you know what? I don't like this. I understand where they were coming from. Here are all the facts and information, which you as listeners might be saying, why is that such a bad idea? I think that's a bad idea for certain content creators because they cannot uh, be used as a weapon against uh, YouTubers who other YouTubers don't like. Yeah. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like, does that make sense? Like, don't get it confused. A lot of these other drama channels are tools to be used against more popular influencers that other popular influencers don't like. Yeah. And if they would go about the task, um, sort of like we have been doing over the past year of saying, you know what? Didn't like this, this, or that. I see it from maybe this, this, or this way. I don't actually agree with it, but this action doesn't set a person in stone, mm -hmm. right? Tomorrow, they can make better choices because you are only the choices you make. If you make bad choices, then you're a bad person. If you make better <laughs> choices, then you're a better person. Yeah. And I don't get to villainize you or make you a terrible person or cyber bully you or have 12 year olds come to your comments and tell <laughs> you to jump off a bridge. Like that is completely unacceptable. And I think that looking at content creation in a different way takes away from the bigger influencers ability to sort of weaponize drama channels to their advantage. Mm -hmm. And so that might be why people don't wanna do it. Also, drama makes for views, right? And so if you can become a very polarizing personality, if you can get up on your soapbox and scream about how the next person is wrong and not treat them like a person and not understand where they're coming from, you're going to get popular faster. Yeah. yeah. Am I wrong? I could be wrong. Let us know in the comment I section below. True. But I definitely think it's true. Like, why do you think tabloids are so successful? Because they come out with the worst stories that they can find about people. They publish the most ridiculous bullcrap. They don't care about how the people are going to feel when they read it, right? And they mentally abuse people, uh, right? Let me cancel us weekly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a form of mental abuse. But the sad thing is, it creates revenue and it creates bonds. Trauma bonding, terrible, yeah. right? But it happens all the time. And I think that if people were forced, sort of like we were forced, right? We were forced to actually look at ourselves and look at our choices and look at what we were doing and saying, we can no longer carry on in this way. I guess we're going to have to treat people like human beings and actually see that even though we don't like the choice, that doesn't mean that we don't like the person. No. You know, I think that other drama channels are scared shitless to have to treat people like human beings. Because wow. gone would be the clickbait titles and, you know, the salacious reporting, uh, the conjecture, the hyperbole. And you actually just end up with, I don't know, balanced, <laughs> ethical stuff that doesn't really generate a lot of revenue. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> so, I mean, and the, of course, there are like, there are like ways to go about it to make it entertaining. It's just more work because you have to be accountable. You have to let people learn. You have to let people grow. And I don't know if we're in a part in our community where people want that. Probably not. What What do you guys say? Do you guys live for it? Do you Do you live for sort of the clickbait titles and look at what so and so did wrong and how terrible? Person no judgment is. if you no, do. No, because you know what. It's been happening for decades, yeah. right? It's, I mean, if it didn't sell, people wouldn't buy it. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. How do you think a lot of these older channels got as popular as they are today? Right? So, and I don't want people to take away that, like, we're angels. Um, because there are definitely people in the community <laughs> that we do not favor, right? You're going to find it a hard time. We're going to have a hard time finding something great to say about Jeffree Star. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll just be the first one to put it out there. Now, I don't want to accuse the man of something I don't know if he did or not. 
Right. Just report on what you see. Just report on <laughs> what gets seen and say, well, this is my opinion and I'm letting you know it's just an opinion, but here it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to find a hard time finding something nice to say about Tati Westbrook. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, that's where I draw the damn line. Okay? But I think there's nothing wrong in at least treating your subjects like human beings. Mm -hmm. Reach out for a statement every once and again. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll give you one. Maybe, maybe they'll block you reach you. out. You, never know. you could get blocked. <laughs> you might get blocked. It's a thing. It happens. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. It's happened to us. <laughs> we might be on the block list of a couple people. Oh, but wow. if they, I mean, did we really care? <laughs> no. We were just trying to get a little statement. That's all. But I don't know. You guys, let us know what you think, uh, how you feel about the entire situation. There is definitely um, some nuances here, but I don't think we learn or grow or get anywhere as a community um, under the certain circumstances. And I think we're seeing a little bit of history repeating itself. Mm -hmm. And like, what, the third time? I this is the third time. And you guys also definitely let us know in the comment section below, have you guys observed the pattern? Have you guys also seen it? For us, it started with us, and that's because we lived through it. Maybe you guys know of some times back in the day mm -hmm. where this has happened before. What the hell know, y'all? We've definitely been informed that the Heathers have been up to the same tricks for several years. So we can only know what we live through and you guys probably have some really good stories that you could tell us to fill us in. Not that we would do anything with it. It's just, you know, a library of information yeah, to like have. To read. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we enjoy reading. So remember when we asked you guys that question at the top of the video, if you know someone who uh, did a crime and they're aware of, you know, someone else doing a crime, should they make people aware of that crime or should they stay silent? You probably answer that they should make people aware of that crime. You know, I mean, imagine someone who had actually gone to jail for, this is gonna be really dramatic, but murder, right? And they get out, they do their time, they get out, they're living on the up and up, they witness another murder. Some people and their reaction to the situation would have you believe because they committed a murder before that they shouldn't say anything about the murder that they just witnessed. Just close their eyes and go home. Which is absolutely not the way a fair and just society works. Yeah. So I think in this too, people have to start confronting their own biases and realize when they're letting other people get away with bad behavior that's happening today because someone made a poor choice in the past. Mm -hmm. That would almost be like your parents not being able to parent you properly because they were bad children. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's not the way society works. Of course, they made a couple of mistakes when they were teenagers because that's what teenagers do. That's what happens. But now they've taken on the burden of raising you, which <laughs> means that they want to do that in such a way that you're a productive member of society. So just because they sneaked out and skipped curfew doesn't mean that they can allow you to do it. Just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> any other thoughts? No, I think you think we covered them all. All right. Well, angels, are we live tonight? I uh, yeah. All right. So we are live. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on a lighter, on a lighter note and all. Yes, our... hopefully, of course, we'll, you know, we'll want to talk about this a little. Hopefully, we're laying it to bed. Hopefully, it never happens again. Hopefully, when someone in the future is confronted with something that they are doing currently, um, they don't bring up things from four, five, six, seven years ago. Especially sort of... if that person's like a different person they were back in the day. Exactly. Cause... And they're you're visibly seeing that they're a different person than they were back in the yeah, day. Like whenever people bring up Jeffree Star's past, I'm like, well, I mean, not really much has changed, has it? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the same person as far yeah. as we know. You know, Hillary Clinton used to be a Republican. Mm. I'm just saying. Do you know how many people that like used to be like they're back in the day, they're like people who were Nazis. And now they use that experience to say, hey, you do realize that Nazis are horrible, awful people, yeah, right? It's a documentary about yeah. It. So it's just like people can change, they can learn, they can grow. If you see them being different people, then all those criticisms from the past are sort of not invalid. But they don't work to vindicate the bullshit behavior you did last week, Tammy. Okay. Like, seriously? Maybe it's time to get over it a little bit. <laughs> so, 
At any rate, we're live tonight at 7 o'clock Pacific. That is going to be 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, hopefully on a lighter note. But you know, we're always down to talk about whatever you want to talk about because that's just the kind of bitches that we are. Yeah. Um, pop on over to Makeup and Murder. We have a new video that we just uploaded last week. Let us know your thoughts. Hope you love it. Um, and until next time, keep, keep sipping. sipping.